Today, we're gonna to be deep diving into probably the most crucial challenge that AMD has faced in years, how they can compete with Nvidia's absolute monster RTX 50 series lineup. After Nvidia's CES announcements and some very interesting leaks about AMD's upcoming cards, we're finally getting a clearer picture of what this battle is going to look like, even if you don't agree with the 50 series or the current pricing, as, well, regardless, they are still selling out faster than they can come in. And that could spell trouble for AMD with the upcoming 9000 series of Radeon GPUs. So today, we're gonna to break down exactly what AMD needs to do to stay competitive. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Oi oi, I hear you're in the market for a proper top of the line monitor. Best blacks, brightest whites, sharper than a tailor's crease, am I right? Yeah, that's the one. Well, look no further, my son. Feast your peepers on this, the Glaremaster 5000, a true marvel of technology. Just uh, maybe don't use it when the sun's out. What? That's not what I want. I was after a 32 inch 4K, 165 Hertz QD OLED with adaptive sync. Cool, blimey, we've got a right tech connoisseur here. You don't mess about, do you? All right, all right. I see where you're coming from. Forget the glare master, that was just a warm up. What you need, my friend, is the Agon Pro, AG326UD from AOC. Top tier gear, 4K, 165 Hertz, QD OLED, all the bells and whistles. And get this, HDR 400 certified. That's the real deal, no mucking about. Hmm, that does sound good. Of course it does. I wouldn't steer you wrong, would I? I'm all about quality, me. Now, if you want to get your hands on one of these beauties, you know what to do. To find out more, click the link in the description below. You won't regret it, my son. Lovely jubbly. Now, before we dive into the technical aspects, we need to face some brutal market reality here. These numbers from JPR tell a story that AMD probably doesn't want to hear. Their discrete GPU market share has plummeted from 17% to just 10% in the past year while Nvidia has climbed to a staggering 90% dominance of the market. Now, this isn't just a temporary blip, it's a trend that's been accelerating, and it makes the recent RDNA 4 retail listing debacle even more concerning. When you're sitting at just 10% market share, you can't afford the kind of uncertainty that comes with listing products and then pulling them back. Every misstep just reinforces Nvidia's top market position. This market reality changes everything about AMD's strategy. Remember when we talked about them needing to price 25% below Nvidia? Well, with these market share numbers and the recent launch confusion, even that might not be enough. We're potentially looking at needing 30 to 35% price cuts just to get gamers to consider switching from Nvidia. And well, here's the really concerning part. This market share drop happened despite AMD already pricing their RDNA 3 cards 20% below Nvidia's offerings. If that level of discount couldn't maintain market share and now they're showing signs of launch instability with RDNA 4, then AMD needs to completely rethink their approach. Now, let's talk about some really interesting benchmarks that just leaked for AMD's RX 9070 XT. These numbers are, well, they're fascinating to say the least. We're looking at 38% improvements over the 7900 GRE at 1440p and 42% at 4K. Now, I can already hear you typing in the comments, why are they comparing it to the 7900 GRE and not the 7900 XTX? Well, here's the thing, and AMD knows this, the 9070 XT is actually trading blows with the 7900 XTX in a lot of games. When you look at the numbers compared to the 6900 XT, we're seeing a 51% improvement at 4K. And if you remember your benchmarks, the 7900 XTX typically runs around 40 to 55% faster than the 6900 XT at 4K. So yeah, you can see why AMD chose the GRE for their comparison points. Let's be real though for a moment. Based on what we've seen from the RTX 5080, it's still going to have an edge over the 9070 XT in most games. But that's not necessarily where the real battle is going to be fought. The more interesting comparison is going to be against the RTX 5070 Ti. Remember, Nvidia are positioned in that card at $749. And yes, before you say it, even if it's retailing for more, if AMD can get close to that performance level while undercutting the price, and well, this is crucial, actually having cards available to buy, then yeah, they could actually have a winner on their hands. Now, this is where things get really concerning for AMD. Nvidia's DLSS 4 has already launched and has 75 games supported at launch. That's not including those which can be upgraded manually, by the way, or games which can be manually adjusted using the Nvidia override feature inside the Nvidia app. Once you include those, the numbers exceed well over 500 games. An FSR 4? Well, it's not even out yet. 
When your competitor has that kind of lead in development support, you're not just fighting a technology battle anymore, you're fighting an ecosystem war. The gap isn't just about quantity either. DLSS4 is using transformer models, which is the same tech that's powering ChatGPT. And we've seen no word from AMD that they will be using this for FSR4. So it's fair to say they probably won't be. NVIDIA's multi-frame gen can now generate three additional frames for each rendered frame and is 40% faster and uses 30% less VRAM than before. So all of the benefits without the major drawbacks. Can AMD really compete with that? But let's talk about some other things. AMD's biggest opportunity right now. And well, it's not just about raw performance. NVIDIA has essentially handed AMD multiple golden tickets with the Blackwell launch. First, there's the uh, <clears throat> supply situation, but more importantly, there are serious technical issues that AMD needs to capitalize on in their marketing. Starting with the, well, very, very big elephant in the room, those missing ROPs in a batch of the Blackwell architecture. Nvidia's blunder here with having a batch leaving production not having the full ROP count is, for a simple term, not acceptable. And their wording heavily suggests that they knew about it once production had started. This affects performance, especially in specific rendering scenarios. And this is exactly the kind of weakness that AMD needs to exploit in their marketing. Assuming, of course, that they don't have manufacturing issues like this themselves. Now, here's where it gets really interesting though, and well, potentially dangerous. We're seeing reports of 12 volt two by six connectors on Blackwell cards literally melting. This isn't just a minor quality control issue, it's a serious safety concern. And well, AMD needs to make hay while the sun shines here or while their competitor cards burn. I suppose their traditional 8-pin connectors might not be as elegant a solution, but they've proven reliable over years of real-world usage. So what I'm trying to say is AMD needs to hammer these points home. Do you want a high-end GPU that won't catch fire? Here's one you can actually buy. They need to just ensure massive day one availability while emphasizing their proven track record of reliable power delivery. Just make sure every retailer has stock, ensure board partners have plenty of chips, and most importantly, make sure their marketing team is ready to emphasize safety and reliability alongside performance. With that being said though, we already have confirmed reports that some AIB models will be using the 12 volt 2x6 connector on their AMD cards. So yeah, maybe it's only a matter of time until RDNA 4 cards start igniting. Time will tell. The software situation for AMD is, well, let's just say it's complicated, and the recent launch delays just aren't helping. FSR4's success isn't just about raw performance either, it's about game support, and right now, that's also a major hurdle. Here's the thing that many people don't realize. Major titles like Cyberpunk and GTA 5 are using FSR3, not FSR3.1. This isn't just a minor versioning issue, it means that these games can't be automatically upgraded to FSR4 by users. Each game needs instead specific developer intervention to implement the new version. The decision to make FSR4 exclusive to RDNA 4 as well has likely contributed to that January launch pullback, which has already created well, significant backlash in the gaming community. This creates an even bigger chicken and egg problem than we usually see. Developers won't prioritize FSR4 implementation without a large user base. But on the flip side, users won't flock to AMD without strong game support. And well, the exclusivity to new hardware just makes that user base even smaller. AMD needs to somehow break this cycle. And that means spending serious money on developer relations. They need dedicated teams working with major studios, providing both technical support and well, let's be honest, financial incentives to implement their latest technologies like FSR4 and well, more importantly, to implement it properly. But the software challenges don't stop at gaming. Let's talk about Rock'em support. And yes, I know many gamers eyes glaze over at this point, but bear with me because this is crucial for AMD's overall market position. Right now, Rock'em support is frankly inadequate compared to Nvidia's CUDA ecosystem. This isn't just about scientific computing anymore. With the AI boom, robust compute support has become a major factor in purchase decisions, even for workstation users who might have previously focused solely on graphics performance. What AMD really needs is just, well, a complete overhaul of their Rock'em strategy. They need to expand hardware support beyond their current limited selection, while simultaneously improving their documentation and development tools to match the quality that Nvidia provides with CUDA. 
The integration with popular AI framework needs serious work as well. I mean, right now it just feels like a bit of an afterthought compared to Nvidia's seamless support. And perhaps most crucially, they need to provide true enterprise grade support and build out a proper ecosystem of Rockham optimized applications. Without these fundamental improvements, they're just gonna continue to be locked out of the rapidly growing AI and compute market. As an idea, Strix Halo, AMD's newest architecture for laptops, which is marketed as, well, workstation architecture, doesn't even support this. Now, the recent launch delay might actually give AMD time to improve their software situation, but they need to use this time wisely. Every week of delay is just, well, another week where Nvidia's software ecosystem grows even stronger, where more developers become entrenched in CUDA development, and where the gap in AI features becomes harder to close. And AMD have said that they wanna focus on AI, but we're yet to see that. The connection between gaming and compute support is definitely becoming increasingly blurred, especially with AI features becoming more prevalent in games. I mean, if AMD can't offer robust compute support for Rock'em, they struggle to attract developers working on next-gen AI-enhanced gaming features, regardless of well, how good their raw gaming performance might be. It's kind of a two-prong approach, and well, Nvidia seem to have it right, and AMD, while there is promise, definitely seem to have it wrong. Now, let's talk about something that has been raising eyebrows in the industry. RDNA 4 cards were actually showing up in retail channels back in January. We're talking real SKUs with actual price tags before AMD suddenly pulled, well, everything back to a March launch. People have even been able to buy the GPU themselves ahead of time. Now, when you see a product get delayed after it's already hitting store shelves, that's, well, uh, that's never a good sign. Though it may actually work in AMD's favor in terms of availability, as I guess you could argue stock has seemingly been around for a couple of months now. So no issues there like we've seen with Nvidia. When we put all of this together, AMD's path to convincing consumers becomes, well, incredibly challenging. Let's be brutally honest here. They're going to need to price these cards at least 25% below Nvidia's MSRPs to have any chance of success. And even that might not be enough. Remember, RDNA 3 launched at a 20% discount compared to Nvidia's offerings, as we alluded to in the beginning. And well, that strategy didn't set the world on fire now, did it? The market instead spoke pretty clearly with their wallets. The reality is that Nvidia's market dominance means AMD needs to price these cards so aggressively that it might not even be financially viable. We're talking about prices that would probably make AMD's accountants break out in cold sweats. When you consider the manufacturing costs, R&D investment, and the need for actual profit margins, it's hard to see how they can go low enough to really shift buyer behavior. For instance, if the 5070 Ti is coming in at $749 as a set MSRP, then the 9070 XT needs to be around $549. And that's just not going to happen. Instead, we're likely going to see the 9070 XT coming in at 699 and the non-XT coming in at 599 And honestly, Apart from the hardcore AMD gamers out there who will buy it no matter what, I don't think this will be enough to even put a dent in Nvidia's market dominance. The technical story is mixed though. Yes, they finally fixed that weird RDNA 3 quirk where AV1 1080p encoding was actually outputting at 1082p, but they've already confirmed RDNA 4 won't support two-pass encoding at any resolution. And well, for me, that's a real step backward for content creators who need that kind of encoding flexibility. It's these kinds of trade-offs that just make it harder for AMD to justify premium pricing, even if they want it to. The real question isn't whether AMD can compete with Nvidia on a technical level. We've seen from benchmarks that they can come close. The question is whether they can overcome that massive 90% market share advantage that Nvidia has built. History shows us that in the GPU market, technical superiority alone isn't enough. You need the ecosystem, the mindshare, and the developer support. What I'm trying to say is AMD has a mountain to climb here and they'll need every advantage that they can get. Hopefully for everyone's sake, they do well. What do you think? Does AMD have what it takes to compete with the RTX 50 series? Let me know in the comments section below what you think about these leaked benchmarks and AMD's chances in this generation as a whole. That aside, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. Also, if you love what we do, consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you'll get access to behind the scenes content, early testing data, bi-weekly game nights, meet up at our, well, brand new offices, and much, much more. The link is, as always, down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.